Learning triads takes time and practice, just mapping them out on the neck. They're really, really valuable shapes. Uh, they, they can fill in a lot of knowledge gaps. They're great for rhythm guitar parts, for voice leading, target notes. But finding out how to apply them in, in real world settings also takes a decent amount of practice. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Chris. A practical application of triads is just as important as sort of mapping them out on the neck. So today you're gonna to learn how to apply triads to a pretty classic chord progression from Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, a song written by Otis Redding and Steve Cropper. Um, Steve Cropper is a fantastic R&B guitar player, sort of one of the grandfathers of, of real beautiful R&B triadic rhythm playing. Um, so you should ch check his stuff out, Booker T and the MGs. He worked with those Otis Redding on this song and many others. Um, I chose Dock of the Bay for two reasons. One is um, the entire song is made up of only major chords. We're going to be just looking at the verse here for this example. Um, but the entire song is made up of only major chords. So we won't have to really tax our ability to remember shapes. We'll just have a few, uh, you know, three shapes to remember for major chords on a single set of strings. But the other reason I chose this song is because the verse specifically isn't really in a key. All these major chords, and I'll show you this when we dig in, are not related to each other. They have some common tones, but their voice leading all suggests that they're in separate keys. And I'm just going to take a minute to analyze what that does for the song. Major chords are very, very stable. They're very, very settled sounding. They're just, you know, it's home base. But Steve Cropper chose each one of these major chords to be in a different key. So the beautiful thing about that is that each time you land on a new major chord, it feels very settled. But when you go to the next one, it's like you're somewhere else, right? So the beautiful thing about that is that Otis Redding's vocal part and his lyrics sit over this really settled but unsettled chord progression in a beautiful way and it makes up why this song is so compelling. You know, left my home in Georgia for the San Francisco Bay. Each one of those chords is a major chord but they're not related to each other. Anyway, that's enough of that analysis. I just wanted to throw that in. Uh, okay, well let's start applying triads to this awesome chord progression. Sitting on the dock of the bay has a great example of a beautiful chord progression. We're only going to be looking at the verse. Uh, there is the chorus, the pre-chorus, there's a bridge in there, um, but the verse represents a very cool sort of blend of easy chords to remember and lots of key changing. So uh, it's just a really great example. The chord progression for the verse is G, B, to C, to A. That repeats a few times. So we're going to pull this out into triads and just tr um, transpose the whole thing into triads, major triads, and we're going to do it on this set of strings, which is D, G, and B. And we're going to start here with this root position triad, this root position G triad. It's right in the middle of our bar chord. Super familiar. When you attach new information and sort of new exploration, to stuff that you already know really well on the on the fingerboard, <clears throat> you increase your chances of success and, and really grasping it and holding on to it. So that's where we're gonna start. Root position, G major triad, root on the D string, fifth fret. The next chord in the progression is B. Interestingly enough, our middle finger is already playing a B note here. When the root is on the G string, the triad, major triad, always looks like this. So here's G to B, root on the G string, fourth fret. B and C are only a half step apart, right? So you've gone from B to C, here you are, root on the fifth fret, G string. And our A chord is right here, root on the seventh fret, D string. Basically just a whole step up from where we started. Here's our G, here's our A. So G, B, C, A. Now we're gonna target our next G chord up the neck on the same set of strings. And that one happens to be right here. Root on the B string, eighth fret. This is a G triad. The next chord in the progression is B. We're already playing a B right here on the D string. 
when the root is on the D string, the triad always looks like this. So there's our B chord. B and C are only a half step apart. Just move that up a half step again. And now we're looking for the A chord, and the same pattern is going to emerge here. The same shape we used for the G up a whole step is A major, root on the B string, 10th fret. So that looks like this. Our last inversion of the G major chord is root on the G string, 12th fret. The next chord in the progression is B. We're already playing a B on the B string here. When the root's on the B string, major triad looks like this. B and C, only a half step apart. Our A chord is up a whole step from where we started on the G. Root on the G string, 14th fret. So that whole progression looks like this. Since I'm already up here, I'm going to show you one more thing, and that is, I'm already up way up here. There's a G right up here. I'm going to start the progression up here, but I'm already I'm running out of neck. So I'm going to say to myself, let's just descend. We're just going to pick um, triads on the same set of strings that are lower in pitch. I'm looking for a B, a lower C, and a lower A. Now if I start over again, run out of neck. There are no more B's that are lower than this. So interesting. Just something to note. Descending, suddenly I run out of neck pretty quick. So now I want to just show you a little bit of voice leading. Um, first of all, the, the melody is all voice leading. Um, again, Steve Cropper wrote this chord progression and Otis Redding wrote the melody and the lyrics around it perfectly. So again, the chord progression is G, B, I'm going to use this A here. Look at the melody. Isn't that beautiful? It's perfect, right? The melody is voice led perfectly inside those chords. I want to show you another example of voice leading, just breaking this, this first shape, this first set of shapes apart. Here's our G to our B chord. Here's the voice leading. This note stays the same. The third of the G, root 3, 5, becomes the root of the B. This note moves up a half step, and this note moves down a half step. The voice leading here is all parallel from, from B to C. And from C to A, this note stays the same, this note goes up a half step, and this one up a whole step. So here's a little voice leading example. It's just really sort of, I'm just targeting the notes that are moving. Here, I'll do it again, but I'll throw in some bends. just tying the chords together with this voice leading. It's really, really beautiful. Voice leading and triads give your guitar playing a much more musical bass. You are operating inside the theoretical harmony of what's happening, and you absolutely cannot go wrong. Okay, there you have a practical application for triads. And again, just major triads in one chord progression, um, but it's very practical. You can see how you can start to map these triads to a chord progression that's actually a little on the complex side, even though it's only using major chords. And that voice leading example, right? Really great voice leading in this song, specifically those half steps and whole steps moving around. Um, it starts to unveil how really valuable and uh, triads are and, and the, the, their massive potential. I've tabbed all this stuff out as I usually do. That's on Patreon. Any support there is greatly appreciated. Thank you. 
Um, and so if you need them, go get them over there. I hope this is really helpful. Um, you know, you should go and check out the rest of the song. Look at the look at the uh, bridge. Look at the pre-chorus. Look at the chorus, and and use these same ideas to unlock um, triad potential for those parts of the tune as well. All right, I hope this is helpful. I'll see you next time.